Everyone loves an underdog story, a tale of the little guy coming out on top of the big dog. Well, these stories aren't just confined to the movie screen or the inside of a novel, it would seem. That don't leave me much space, man. That gonna be your problem, huh? <laughs> Heck, as I record this, underdogs are getting massive news time for sticking it to hedge funds by buying GameStop stock. Sometimes, the little guys find their own advantage. Let's take a look at 15 genius people who beat the system. Number 15. Fan edits Ban's Wikipedia page to get backstage. Being able to hang out with your hero is everyone's dream. But for this savvy music fan, that was more of a reality thanks to some clever quick thinking. When David Spargo went to a Peking Duck concert, he really fancied getting backstage and meeting the Australian duo for himself. The only problem being that there was a security team blocking the way who were understandably not letting anyone to just waltz into the area where the band were hanging out. Most people would think that all hope was lost, but David Spargo isn't most people. Through editing the band's Wikipedia page to show that Spargo was related to the Peking Duck duo, Ruben Stiles and Adam Hyde, through listing himself as family on their page, Spargo got his wish granted. Absolutely brilliant. The security guard had no idea that it was fabricated, and so they ended up just letting Spargo through to hang out with his favorite band. I'll have to remember and try that out next time for myself. Imagine the musicians' confused expressions when they were told their relative had stopped by to say hello. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the star topic. When traveling, it can be extremely difficult and frustrating to fall asleep. Aside from the uncomfortable seats, which feel like sleeping on a bed of needles in comparison to your soft mattress at home, the blaring sun in the sky and the light bulbs above usually make getting comfortable and falling asleep a horrible experience altogether. But this clever kid managed to solve all of that and beat the system through ingeniously using the fabric from her headrest as a makeshift sleep mask. They might be able to get to sleep a lot easier now, but I can't imagine that would be the cleanest of things to rub on your face. What do you think? Remember to comment down below with the hashtag star topic and let us know your opinion on this eye mask, clever or gross. And now to the next topic. Number 14. Band fan hires Crane to watch football. Football clubs globally form dedicated fan bases around their teams, which are more like a family or a cult than a simple sports team fan base. This dedication to the game reached new heights when this one football lover in Turkey was banned from his team's stadium for 12 months. Rather than sticking to appreciating and cheering on his team from the sofa, Ali Demirkaya took matters into his own hands. While he wasn't allowed into Turkish football club Dennis Lispor Stadium, he found a nifty way around the ban where he could still watch the games in person. What did he do? Well, he bought a crane and positioned it just outside of the stadium, giving him the perfect aerial view of the pitch that any fan would be jealous of. Talk about getting creative in your dedication. Imagine the look on the officials' faces who banned the man when they saw the barred fan staring down from the sky. The man partook in fan chants and certainly wasn't shy as he swung his scarf and flapped his arms about for the whole duration of the match. Number 13. Dad pretends to be Morocco Prime Minister to get table at restaurant. One of the most frustrating things when booking a table at a restaurant for the family at short notice is coming across the perfect restaurant only to find that the place is completely booked. While most would admit defeat and give in to getting takeaway, this father made his own luck by audaciously pretending to be someone famous. Of all of the people to choose, this father aimed high and decided on claiming that he is the president of Morocco, King Mohammed VI. After telling the staff member on the other end of the line that they are in fact the president of a whole country, they were quickly given the best seat in the house. Yes! 
Clearly, being a known figure unlocks doors the typical person would find locked. When they arrived for their meal with the President of Morocco facade still in full swing, the chef wanted to greet the leader of the African country himself. They shook hands, and the father was even asked to sign a plate and pose for a photo, with no one batting an eye or realizing that it was all just a hoax. Fair play, although I'm sure the chef wasn't too pleased when he realized it was all a con job. Number 12. Fake Prince of Montenegro and Macedonia There's lying to your teacher that your dog ate your homework, and then there's lying to celebrities, diplomats, and businessmen across the globe for multiple years as you falsely claim to be a prince of a country which doesn't have one. This absolutely audacious and brilliant stunt was performed by a man who claimed to be called Prince Stefan Cernetic of Montenegro and Macedonia. Thank you very much, everybody. Hope to, to see you tomorrow. The con man went as far as to set up a Facebook page and a website to show off his fake credentials, and people, of course, lapped it up. He even got to meet tennis superstar Novak Djokovic and Pamela Anderson. His partner in crime posed as his ambassador in Italy, although the two were soon hunted down by Italian police. What gave him away? Well, for starters, Montenegro and Macedonia haven't had a royal family since 1918. You gotta appreciate the con cunningness of the stunt, although I kinda doubt it'll be worth it when they're relaying their wild stories while being stuck talking to their fellow inmates of their prison cell. Number 11. Titanic Survivor Lies About Heroism When the Titanic struck an iceberg and began its descent towards the bottom of the ocean's floor, getting onto one of the few lifeboats available was a matter of literal life or death. While this was largely up to chance, one man who was determined to get onto a life-saving craft by any means necessary was Nikola Lulik. After boarding as a third-class passenger from Southampton, England, Lulik was hired to accompany emigrants as an unofficial translator and guide to venturing to America. When the fateful collision took place, Lulik was one of the lucky ones to survive and be rescued by Carpathia in Lifeboat 15. In New York, one of Lulik's companions, Jan Jalsevac, revealed the reason as to why his friend was saved. As to my friend Nikola Lulik, I have to say that he was rescued by fetching the cap of a sailor which he put on his head, so he could make his way to a boat. This was certainly a sneaky tactic, but it worked, so fair play. However, Lulik would go on to claim that he was saved because of a heroic act involving himself diving into the ocean to save a baby, which was floating in the ice-cold water below. Lulik even toured and gave lectures about his fake heroism on that terrible night. However, all of the children aboard Lifeboat 15 were accompanied by a parent and were put in aboard the Titanic, with there being no evidence that any baby was rescued from the water. Being paid to tour around and talk about a false account Count of your bravery is a pretty slimy thing to do, but when you're desperate, I guess you'll literally do anything for some extra income. Number 10. Fake Coachella Wristbands Work Music festivals are like heaven to any passionate fan of music. Filling your summer schedule with partying and dancing to your favorite musicians playing on a stage nearby sounds absolutely divine. There are very few music festivals in the world as notorious and iconic as Coachella. With such a great reputation of offering a good time to anyone who's lucky enough to enter the festival, it comes as no surprise that getting your hands on tickets for Coachella is like gold dust. However, that hasn't deterred these determined music fans from enjoying their summer. In the early days of Coachella, before everything went digital, it was very easy to come buy tickets for the festival, fraudulent or not. Some of these tickets were unbelievably handmade, with one festival goer claiming that they wrapped an ad from a magazine around their wrists. With the ad being the same color as the designated wristbands, they amazingly managed to walk right in without paying a single cent. Now that is smart, although with the intense security today, all you would get for trying to pull this stunt is a laugh in the face. Number 9. Halloween Costume Party Turns Out To Be Wedding Imagine turning up to a Halloween costume party only for the guests to spring the small fact that the Halloween party you had thought you were attending was actually a full-blown wedding. 
Sounds like a roller coaster of a night, although the photos that resulted from this surprise wedding are absolutely glorious. With the bride and groom not wanting the stress surrounding the lead up to the big day, and the bride having recently lost her father, so she didn't have anyone to give her away, the pair decided on the unconventional wedding ceremony. I think it's a brilliant plan, as you don't have any hassle, anxiety, or stress in the lead up to the day, and you get some hilarious photos, such as mafia bosses, burlesque dancers, and even a couple dressed as a ham sandwich with a large pig head mask wishing you a happy married life. Get it? Sandwich! I'm sure their wedding will live long in the memory of all those who attended. I just wish there was footage of the bride and groom explaining to the dressed up guests that they were in fact attending a wedding and that they weren't joking. And no, you're not allowed to go home and change. Number 8. Cafe hides bad health rating as brunch sign. Being slammed with a not very good hygiene rating is every restaurant owner's worst nightmare. The last thing you want to be questioning when tucking into your meal is whether or not your cutlery and plate have been cleaned properly, or whether some rodents were present in the kitchen when your cuisine was whipped up. This isn't ratatouille, their presence doesn't make for a greater dish. So when this restaurant in Harlem, Astor Row Cafe, was given the disappointing health rating of B, they decided to get creative with their advertising. As the rating needed to be displayed, they, of course, complied. However, what they proceeded to do was very cunning indeed. Through using some spare letters lying about, they wrote Sunday Brunch on the window, perfectly disguising the health rating amidst the letters. The health officials weren't too pleased, but the owners claimed they were given the poor rating due to a cleaning rag left on the counter. However, the officials are singing from a different song sheet, with them claiming that they found evidence of mice on their inspection. Interesting. Yikes. A clever way of beating the system, but if only they were as clean as they were cunning, they wouldn't be in this mess in the first place. Number 7. Gary Vider conned his way into an interview with Michael Jordan. You probably think you have a pretty cool dad. But there is probably none cooler than comedian Gary Viters. Viters' dad and his son were huge sports fans, and with Madison Square Garden being the mecca of sports entertainment, you can understand how ecstatic a young Gary must have been to be taken here to see various sports teams and icons play up close. But they didn't just attend like any regular paying customer. No, they would attend the events pretending to be Sports Illustrated Kids reporters. Dressed out in the full gear with pens, papers, and recorders at the ready, Gary and his father got to watch the sports games from the best seats in the house. I would go with a pen and a pen and a recorder, and uh, we'd sit in the press box. Not only that, but they were routinely given access to the locker room full of all the superstar players. And uh, I got that at game seven when I went into the locker room. Memorabilia and autographs were thrown their way high and low. Of course, Gary had to do his fair share of reporting. Through reading copies of Sports Illustrated Kids, Gary stuck to the script and asked general questions any kid reporter would ask. What's your uh, favorite advice to the player? With those answering them taking the form of Shaq and even Michael Jordan at times. Sounds absolutely insane. Number 6. Gorilla Public Servant Corrects Freeway Sign. Richard Ancrum is an artist who once missed a turn on the 110 freeway whilst driving north. This mishap changed everything. Going through downtown Los Angeles, the plan was to merge onto Freeway 5. Instead, Ancrum got himself lost. It wasn't until years later that Ancrum would realize his mistake, or should I say, the Californian Department of Transportation's mistake. There was no sign to indicate the turn off to join Interstate 5, meaning the mistake hadn't been Ancrum's fault or bad eyesight all along. Determined to not let the same mishap happen to anyone else, Ancrum took matters into his own artistic hands. Through carefully designing and painting a sign highlighting the upcoming interstate merger, Ancrum essentially forged an LA freeway sign to help others from getting lost too. He did a pretty damn good job of it, to be fair. Calling it an act of guerrilla public service, Ancrum designed his new sign to match all of the specifications of an LA freeway sign, including the driver's ability to read the sign whilst driving at high speeds. After carefully placing the homemade sign up and blending it in with the rest of the 
sign, it seemed like the perfect crime. Not many people knew about the sign, but then word got out thanks to a local newspaper and the sign was removed. Much to Ankrum's surprise, what replaced it was an official sign from the State Department. It just goes to show, be the change you want to see. Oh, how profound of me. Anyway, moving on. Number 5. Girl Hides Huge Hip Flask as Handbag for Prom Going to prom is a great time in your high school career, where everyone gets to get dressed up, have a drink, and dance in some fancy dresses and suits until the morning calls. That being said, one huge obstacle outside of what to wear and where to go afterwards is how to sneak alcohol into the event. To save money and have enough for the night, this clever girl decided to hide her flask in plain sight. And it can't get any more obvious than pretending this huge metallic container is actually her handbag when, in fact, it is filled with alcoholic spirits. What a brilliant idea. To any unsuspecting adult, they just believe it's a quirky bit of young people fashion, when in actuality, it's just a large hip flask. The size of the flask is almost comical, too. You could fit an entire bottle of vodka in that thing, and I don't mean the small bottles, either. She'll definitely be popular amongst her friends when everyone doesn't fancy spending so much money on the overpriced alcohol on offer. Brilliant move on her part. That's certainly one way to get the party started. Number 4. Boys wear skirts to protest for shorts. When a group of boys from Exeter's ISCA Academy in England were banned from wearing shorts as part of their uniform, they took matters into their own hands and turned up to school wearing skirts. The normal response to take, of course. With temperatures rising and male pupils not allowed to wear anything other than a pair of clammy trousers to school, they felt they were under serious injustice. Like when you sit down, your thighs get stuck to the seat. Their little protest sparked a debate as to whether the rules should be changed, resulting in the school passing the new amendment that shorts will be shortly brought in as uniform. On top of this, one school announced that the students were also allowed to not wear their jumper or blazer when it got too hot in the summer months. Unbelievably, they were even allowed to undo their top button and leave their shirt untucked if they were feeling particularly hot under the collar. Wow, it truly does show you that standing up for what you believe in can really pay off. Who knew a bunch of boys wearing a skirt could be so powerful? Number 3. Disguised Iranian Women Sneak Into Football Stadium It sounds pretty crazy to imagine that a woman should be banned from going to a sports match, but these brave Iranian women had a trick or two up their sleeve to get inside the sports stadium and defy the ban. All it took were some fake beards and wigs for these brave women to sneak inside the football grounds of their favorite team, Persepolis, as they faced their arch-rival Sepid Root in Tehran, Iran. Photos of the disguised women have been making the rounds on social media, with plenty of users heralding their attempt at fooling the people and stilling the ban. Technically, there isn't an official ban, but there might as well be if you look at the recent evidence of a British-Iranian activist, Gonche Gavami, being detained after attempting to watch a men's volleyball match in Iran in 2014. Or when 35 women were detained for trying to attend a volleyball match in March 2018. So, to avoid being turned away at the door or facing criminal charges, it can be clear to see why they didn't mind putting on some fake hair so they can see their favorite team in person. Number 2. Residents Sidestep Sidewalk No Chairs or Tables Rule Everyone loves an underdog story, a tale of the little guy sticking it to the big man. So while rules are usually in existence to keep things in line, it's always fun to find a loophole around one. The rich do it all the time with tax avoidance schemes, so why can't the everyday man do the same? When the mayor of this town put together the rule that you couldn't have tables and chairs on the sidewalk as they were cramping up the space, the residents weren't too pleased. After getting a bit creative, they found the answer they were looking for in the back of a truck. Rather than getting into a battle with the local government, which they were never gonna win, they instead opted to take their road gatherings onto the back of a parked truck. Through the bridge brilliant use of the flat space on the back of the truck, the group could continue their outdoor socializing without technically breaking any rules. They might have been chuffed with their cunningness, but I'm sure the mayor wasn't too pleased when he caught word of the scheme. Number 1. 
Italian man wears rimmed disc to keep COVID away. The coronavirus has gripped the world in a generational plague, which is often compared to the Spanish flu. While it might be terrifying to navigate your way through this quarantine and mask-filled world, there's always humor to be found. For example, just have a look at this Italian man's insistence for those around him to keep the recommended six feet apart. Cioè questa sarebbe la distanza di sicurezza per il coronavirus. Per il coronavirus. While most people just bark at those around them to stay back, this man took matters into his own hands by wearing a wide-rimmed disc to keep potential infectors away. I can't say I've ever seen this tactic being used before, but nevertheless, I'm sure it is quite effective. My only question is, what does he do when he's confronted with a doorway or an escalator? Imagine being randomly smacked in the body by a man wearing a disc as you casually stand on an elevator looking at your phone. This might save him from corona, but it'll certainly get him into other kinds of trouble. It goes to show a little bit of clever thinking can go a long way. Which of these stories impressed you the most? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!